Hi students, welcome to yet another session of my class. We are discussing the paper Word Classics. Let us continue the topic. In the last class we have discussed about um, Italian literature. Today we are going to discuss about some important writers in that particular branch that is Italian, Italian literature. First we are going to discuss about Dante. Yes. We all are very familiar with this writer, that is his full name, that is Dante Alighieri. Dante Alighieri. Dante was an Italian poet, prose writer, literary theorist, moral philosopher and political thinker. Yes, he was a poet, Italian poet, prose writer, literary theorist, moral philosopher and a political thinker. He is famous for his monumental epic poem La Commedia. We all know that his name is uh, associated with the world famous epic poem La Commedia otherwise called the Divine Comedy. Yes, his name is closely associated with this monumental epic poem the Divine Comedy. The, this epic poem is a landmark in Italian literature. It is a deep Christian vision of humankind's temporal and eternal destiny. Yes. What is this uh, epic poem about? It is a deep Christian vision of humankind's temporal and eternal destiny. It has two dimensional viewpoints. On its personal level, it draws on Dander's own experience of exile from his native city of Florence. Yes, to some extent, we can say that this Divine Comedy is an autobiographical work. It's a somewhat autobiographical work because it draws on Dander's own experience of exile from his native city of Florence. And on its comprehensive level, it may be read as an allegory. Yes. To some extent, we can say that it is an autobiographical work. And on its comprehensive level, it may be read as an allegory, taking from the form of a journey. Yes. This poem is set in the form of a journey through hell, purgatory and paradise. So it follows Dander's own allegorical journey through these three worlds. That is through hell, that is inferno, purgatory, that is purgatorio and paradise, that is paradiso. That is, that's why, yes, it is called an autobiographical work because it draws on Dander's own experience of exile from his native city of Florence and also it is his own, uh, it follows Dander's own allegorical journey through hell, purgatory and uh, paradiso. And he was guided at first by the character of Virgil and later by his beloved Beatrice. And uh, Dante wrote of his own path to salvation. Why he wrote such a monumental epic? He wrote of his own path to salvation, offering philosophical and moral judgments along the way. That is the uh, importance behind this particular uh, monumental epic poem. And this Dander's Divine Comedy, it presents an encyclopedic overview of the attitudes, beliefs, philosophies, aspirations and material aspects of the medieval world. And he is seen as the father of modern Italian. Dante is seen as the father of modern Italian. And his works have flourished before his death. And regarding this divine comedy, Dander's divine comedy, a great work of medieval literature. And it is, a, I already told, it is a deep Christian vision of man's temporal and eternal destiny. And this particular poem analyzes or amazes by its array of learning, its penetrating and comprehensive analysis of contemporary problems 
and its inventiveness of language and imagery. By choosing to write his poem in the Italian vernacular rather than in Latin, Dante decisively influenced the course of literary development. Yes, he uh, chose uh, uh, by choosing to write his poem in the Italian vernacular rather than in Latin. That is, he opted Italian vernacular for writing this particular epic poem. And he primarily used the Tuscan dialect, which would become standard literary Italian. But his vivid vocabulary ranged widely over many dialects and languages. And this is about our uh, Italian poet Dante Allegri and his very famous monumental epic poem La Commedia or otherwise called uh, the Divine Comedy. I think all of you understand about Dante. Next we are going to discuss about Alberto Moravia, another Italian writer. So Alberto Moravia, an Italian novelist and journalist, was one of the leading figures of the 20th century, whose novels explore matters of modern sexuality, social alienation and existentialism. So Alberto Moravia, he was an Italian novelist and journalist. Then he was one of the leading figures of the 20th century. And his novels explore matters of modern sex sexuality. That is, most of his works deal with the modern sexuality, themes of modern sexuality, social alienation, and existentialism. Existentialism is a uh, theoretical framework which deals with the meaninglessness of life or questioning the existence of God. Then, he is famous for his debut novel, Glee Inferenti, Indifferenti. He is famous for his debut novel, this Alberto Moravia. The novel titled Glee Indifferenti and for the anti-fascist novel, Il Confirmista. Yes, he, he is famous for these two uh, novels. One is Glee Indifferenti and the other one is Il Confirmista. Most of his work deal with the emotional aridity, isolation and existential frustration and express the futility of either sexual promiscuity or conjugal love as an escape. Yes, most of his work deal with the emotional aridity. Emotional aridity in the sense means lack of emotions, frustration, um, feelings, etc. That is... Uh, uh, lack of that emotional warmth, feelings, etc. That is emotional aridity. Most of his work deal with emotional aridity, then isolation and existential frustration and express the futility of either sexual promiscuity. Sexual promiscuity here means, what is the meaning of sexual promiscuity? Sexual promiscuity means the loss of purity in the sexual relations. That means uh, having an affair with uh, uh, two more partners, etc. That is sexual uh, promiscuity. Uh, to, that is a relationship with the two more partners, etc. That is a loss of that purity. So sexual promiscuity or conjugal love. Conjugal love uh, is a married relationship or married love uh, as an escape. So, most of his work deal with the emotional aridity, isolation and existential frustration and express the futility, futility the meaninglessness of either sexual promiscuity or conjugal love as an escape. His style of writing was praised by many critics. His dark, unadorned style, unadorned means without any uh, ornamentation. That is unadorned style, psychological penetration. That is most of his work that is penetrating deep into the psychological level of the readers. Psychological uh, and also uh, explore the uh, psychological level of the characters also. His dark, unadorned style, psychological penetration, his narrative skill and his ability to create authentic characters 
and their realistic dialogue were remarkable and it was rooted in the tradition of 19th century narrative supported by high social and cultural awareness that is about his writing style his dark unadorned style that is he followed unadorned style of writing then psychological penetration that is penetrate deep into the psychological level of readers as well as the characters that is express the characters in those manner so psychological penetration then his narrative skill his narration that style of narration and his ability to create authentic characters stable characters or genuine characters and uh, uh, realistic dialogue that all all these were remarkable and it was rooted that his style of writing was rooted in the tradition of 19th century narrative and it was supported by high social and cultural awareness the hypocrisy of contemporary life and the inability of people to find happiness in traditional ways such as love and marriage were the themes of moravia is yes, another themes that is the hypocrisy of uh, contemporary life that is the boastful life that exaggerated life the hypocrisy of contemporary life and the inability of people to find happiness in traditional ways such as love and marriage that is that uh, these were the themes of alberto moravia i think all of you understand about this italian writer alberto moravia next we are going to discuss about boccaccio that is giovanni boccaccio boccaccio was an italian writer poet and a renaissance humanist and he is best remembered as the author of decameron that is his very famous work he is best remembered as the author of decameron what is the significance of this particular work that is decameron that is later uh, we know that this is uh, chaucer's jeffrey chaucer's canterbury tales is based on this particular work decameron this chaucer was highly influenced by the writings of boccaccio especially this decameron and the souls of this uh, canterbury tales is decameron that is the significance of this particular work So Boccaccio was an Italian writer, poet, and a Renaissance humanist, and he is best remembered as the author of Decameron, and he was the one who laid the foundations for the humanism of the Renaissance, along with the Petrarch. Along with the Petrarch, that is, uh, combined with the Petrarch, he was the one who laid the foundations for humanism, humanistic. concept that movement humanism of the uh, as yes, humanism in renaissance the foundations for the humanism of the renaissance along with the petrarch he raised the vernacular literature to the level and status of the classics of antiquity he raised that particular dialect that is vernacular literature to the uh, level and status of the classics of antiquity <laughs> his work was a shift away from medieval romances to literary realism as most of his work was a shift away from that is a shift from medieval romances to literary realism the decameron was not just a collection of love stories they provided an overview of the human condition that is the significance of that particular work it was not just a collection of love stories they provided an overview of the human condition and later it became the inspiration for chaucer's canterbury tales i already told you and he demonstrated that prose could capture the complexity of humans and their situations he demonstrated that prose could capture the complexity of humans and their situations and he was very much interested in the classical past and can be considered to be one of the great mediators between the classical world and renaissance italy yes he was very much interested in the classical past 
and can be considered to be one of the great med mediators between classical world and renaissance italy renaissance italy uh, we all know that uh, that particular movement that is renaissance that is a rebirth or revival of classical learning that is renaissance and it is charted that is it is believed that it is generally believed to have begun in italy during the 14th century that is just after the end of the middle ages and reached its height that is this renaissance movement it reached its height in the 15th century and after that the renaissance spread to the rest of europe in the 16th and 17th century that is about that particular movement that is actually it is believed that is generally believed to have begun in italy that revival of classical learning and what is the uh, peculiarity of this particular country this italy is a place with a rich cultural history so our writer boccaccio yes i already told you he was a renaissance humanist so he was very much interested in the classical past and can be considered to be one of the great mediators between the classical world and renaissance italy and he was a deeply religious man and believed in earthly pleasures he was a deeply yes a religious man but he believed in earthly pleasures he was determined to make italian a respected literary language through his writings and his other famous works are il filo il filo colo that is uh, the love afflicted that is the meaning of il filo colo that is his famous works other famous works and then il filo stretto il filo stretto that is the love struck that is the meaning of il filo stretto all these are his famous works that is il filo colo filo colo that is the love afflicted then il il filo stretto that is the love struck that is a um uh so that is uh, il filo stretto that is love struck it is a short form in ottava rima telling the story of troilus and the faithless cressida this il filo stretto it uh, it is uh, a story about troilus and the faithless cressida that is about boccaccio giovanni boccaccio i think all of you understand about boccaccio and his very famous work he is best remembered for uh, decameron and we all know that later it became this decameron became the inspiration for chaucer's canterbury tales and his another famous work that is il filostrato for tom uh, chaucer's troilus and cressida is sold for Troilus and the Chaucer's Troilus and Cressida. These are uh, the important points regarding Boccaccio. That is Giovanni Boccaccio, Italian, very famous Italian writer, poet, and a Renaissance humanist. Yes, students, there is a homework for you, and the homework is write a note on uh, Dante, Alberto Moravia, and Uh, Giovanni Boccaccio write your homework and uh, send back to me thank you have a nice day see you again